to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about rewiring triggers. Triggers are what everyone has. These triggers sometimes can feel like mountains. Sometimes they can feel like potholes. Sometimes, like, basically, they are things that just stop us from actually reaching our goal or in time or they slow us down or they just make us want to sit down and be like, nah, I'm done or just go back where we started from before we had the goal. I don't know what trigger you have, but I know you have a trigger. If you don't, that's great. You've overcome. And if you overcame in a way that's different from what I'm gonna talk about here, please comment below so that you can share with me and share with everyone who's gonna be reading and we can all help each other out. Yeah? Thank you. Anyway, what's a trigger you may ask? According to Cambridge Dictionary, it says a trigger is an event or situation that causes something to happen. So it's an event or situation that causes something to happen, such as um, fights, illness, low finances, deadlines, <laughs> deadlines, guys, <laughs> um, broken marriages, bro breakups, um, like. It can be anything, literally anything, anything that causes something to happen. It could be something positive or something negative. That's the thing. And these triggers, they also impact on our brain, the way our brain works. If you can rewire your brain or change the way your brain works, then trust me, you'll be able to overcome most of these triggers. But today we're not talking about brain in depth. We're just looking at it. And a glimpse, just a snippet, a snippet. All right, so research has shown, uh, research reveals many reciprocal links among the central nervous system, the endocrine system, the immune system. <laughs> let, me, let me just break it down for you. The central nervous system recognizes uh, and records experiences. So for example, it'll record Cynthia likes sweets. Why does it think Cynthia likes sweets? Cynthia keeps going to the shops, she gets sweet, she gets ice cream, she gets this, she gets that. So now the central nervous system is like, okay, Cynthia likes sweets. Yeah. And then the endocrine system produces hormones uh, which govern many body functions such as appetite, thirst, and so forth. So Cynthia likes sweets. However, one day Cynthia decides, nah, you know what, I've been eating too many sweets. Uh, I want to stop, uh, I want to become more healthy, you know. So um, I need to stop eating sweets. I need to um, start eating more vegetables. She's not used to eating vegetables, so she doesn't even know what she's doing. And then she starts eating salads. And uh, but the body's like, Cynthia, what are you doing? You want sweets, you want sweets, you want sweets. And then, so basically, like the central nervous system is like, no, what's going on? And then the endocrine is like, we want sweets, we want sweets, we want sweets, we want sweets. And then the immune system basically uh, organizes responses to infections and other challenges. So basically, when um, the immune system, like main function, you can study it in the link of sent, um, the research, the, the reference. <laughs> All right, basically, the immune system, like its, its main function in the body is to fight infections, right? So if you're eating healthy, uh, those foods can help actually the immune system, boost the immune system, you can fight infection better. But if you're eating unhealthy foods, such as sweet, sweet is like, it's amazing, but it's also the biggest <sighs> thing that affects us. Anyway, so if you're eating a lot of sweets, the immune system will try by all means to fight, but after a while it just gives up and it's like, nah, I can't do it, man. Like Cynthia eating too many sweets, I can't even function and then you have a low immune system, you end up being ill and all that. So Cynthia started well, guys. She wanted to change her lifestyle, but, but this brain thing, the way it functions, right? I was like, no, we want sweets. And then she just ended up losing it. She was like, nah, I love that. And yeah, cause she didn't know how to change the way her brain works. She didn't know how to, avoid this trigger maybe she was okay uh she was doing well but then she had a breakup or she failed uh or um something happened around her something triggered it and then she was like no nah, i can't do it i can't do it i need sweets i need ice cream i need ice cream and then phew, she went 
and she had a suit. Now, you're like, okay, so what? Basically, our senses, like the triggers are actually activated by five senses. Sense of feel, sight, smell, sound, taste. I just wanna do like a song, you know, with a ding, ding, But anyway, these triggers are often very personal to each individual. They're all different. For example, someone can walk into a big store like Debenhams and be like, you know what, I came for clothes. They'll go there, get their clothes and get out. Back in the day, Cynthia, 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 what's wrong with you? Back in the day, Cynthia would walk into Debenhams or a big stop like that. And you know what, what would happen? She would, her sense of smell was so huge, guys, she had an addiction for perfumes. So whenever she smelled perfumes, she would be like, And then she just end up buying it. Like she'll spray it first, you know, like, you know, you know, like they just do it. Now like, oh, that smells nice. Oh my gosh. And then before she knew she knows it, she'd have literally left the shop with one or two perfumes. Until one day she went home and then she looked at her wardrobe and she was like, Cynthia, what's wrong with you? You've got like a water full of perfumes which you're not even using you're broke girl you're not really that rich why do you have perfumes and that's when she realized okay she has an addiction and she had to change the way she reacts to this addiction so for her the biggest thing was sense of smell okay i'm talking about myself this is a real life story guys yeah but we overcame and then when she was like okay my biggest challenge is sense of smell i love i'm addicted to perfume but we need to stop because most of my money i work so hard but most of my money is going to perfumes and that's really not helpful that's not benefiting me that's not like investing more in my future you know that kind of thing and then so she started writing down i started writing down okay i would write down every time before i went to like those big shops like i don't need perfumes and so I would go up there and then I'm like, oh, that smells nice. And I'm like, uh, okay, I don't need perfumes. And then so end up like taking a different hour, going straight to what I wanted and leaving, the kind of thing. And it helped. Now I can go to shops, I can go to big shops, and I'll probably smell spray. I'm like, oh, that smells nice. Ooh, ooh. And then that's it. We're gone because I don't need it. Unless if I need to restock, then that's when I'll buy. Get it? But it all had to, in order for me to actually uh type tackle the triggers trigger smell uh tackle the trigger that really impacts on me as an individual i had to really think about it so i had to change the way my thought process works um so you're like okay how can i change the way my thought process works well these are a few examples and i'm gonna give a different example from sugar and perfume so you could ask yourself like this question just write it down go in your quiet area write it down or just pause and really think about it so some questions you could ask yourself are what's happening right now what thoughts feelings and sensations do i notice what am i reacting to how is this affecting me what is the result of me believing this thought for example a boy or a young child grows up uh, and then in primary school, they are told, you know what, you're so dumb, you can't do anything. So they then grow up and then they try to, they write a test and they fail. So in their head, they're like, oh, I'm so dumb, you can't do anything because Dave told me, sorry if Dave, if you're watching, if there's a Dave who's watching, because <laughs> it's the first name that came. They're like, Dave told me I was dumb when I was young, so I should be dumb, you know? And then they grow up with the whole mentality of I'm dumb. And then they stop putting too much effort because when Dave told them they are dumb, they tried to put a lot of effort, but then they still failed. So now they are now putting the minimum and they're just going with the flow in life. And so one day they're now uh, in uni or in college and they've got deadlines. They want to really, they, they, like they need good grades, that kind of thing. But so they've got like an assignment ahead of them and they're thinking, oh, I need to do it. But then, because Dave once told them that they are dumb, it then affects how they react. Um, so what am I reacting to? They are reacting to what they were told when they were young by Dave was probably not working <laughs> or not even doing anything in life, you know? 
or might be doing something. Hmm. Anyway, and then how is it affecting me? So it's then affecting them in the sense that they're not putting the minimum effort to their goals. They're not putting as much effort into their studies. What is the result? They end up getting the minimum grades. They're not like reaching the maximum, um, like they're not reaching the maximum they could actually reach. They're not becoming the best version of themselves. You could resonate with this. Um, in any way it doesn't have to be school or ever it could be anything sometimes like the thoughts that were planted in us when we we're young we carried them into adulthood without even realizing and then they stop us from reaching our goals um so change the way you think and then you'll be able to so now that you know okay uh most of the times i can't reach my goals because of what I was told when I was young, or because of this, or because of the way I think. Now you know how you think. You're like, okay, so why do I need to do? What's the practical tip? Here's a practical tip, um, an example of what you could do. For example, what are the triggers? Remember, back in the day, I was triggered with perfumes. Um, no, I was triggered with going to the shops. Whenever I went to Debenhams or big shops like that, I'm like, that was a big trigger for me. What is the trigger for perfumes? And then how to change it, I had to write it down on my hand and then remind myself. And by doing that, over time, I was able to actually stop that addiction. Someone could be, oh, watching TV. Really? Yeah, watching TV. What is the trigger for? Whenever I'm watching TV, I want to eat popcorn. I want to eat that. I want to, you know, that kind of thing. Or I end up overeating my meals without even thinking I end up going for some more and some more and some more without even sitting down and actually thinking I'm actually full. So what can you do? How can you change that? Have set meal times. Try to eat away from the TV. Opt for a healthy snack or homemade healthy popcorn. And basically, like the list goes on. You can just do like a whole list of what's triggering you and then find what does it cause. And then once you're able to do that, once you do that, guess what? You'll be able to reach your goal. And your goal could literally be like you just sat, sitting all, like once you figure out what's triggering me, you can sit down and be like, okay, I need to make some goals, which are smart, like specific, measurable, achievable, um, rel reliable, um, time, whatever. But I can explain that in a different video. Basically, like examples of goals you can set yourself up, oh, I need to start paying attention to the triggers around me a bit more. I need to be less impulsive when it comes to eating. I need to start putting roadblocks to triggers. Some roadblocks, basically, your trigger could be like the computer. Right now, a lot of us are on our computers 24 seven. For some people, it's okay. For other people, they're struggling because it's like, the more I'm on my computer, the more those pop-ins, they come. And then sometimes I end up watching what I'm not supposed to be watching or end up feeling like, oh, I need someone because of what I'm watching, you know, like pornography and all that. Yeah, and that could literally be a trigger for you. But for you to actually stop that trigger, you have to download certain software, certain apps to, that will help you to actually avoid you from going there. Does it make sense? Oh, it does. I really hope it does. So once you're able to do that, guess what? You'll be able to reach your goal. When this week started, um, I remember last week, I was trying to do this for exercise and then for a while, I kind of slagged, and my best friend was like, Cynthia, because we have an app where we record and then we, we monitor each other. So she was like, hey, I haven't seen you running or doing any, what's going on? I was like, you know what, I need to get back to it. So I set myself a target. I was like, this time, I want to be able to run a bit further. I want to be able to uh, cycle a bit further. So um, in less time. So I did that, and guess what? Congratulations, this activity is your longest ride. On travel, I was able to do that. I was able to reach my goal because um, I put a timetable for myself. I was like, okay, I've dedicated from this time to that time. Practically, I'm not going to be studying the whole day. So I was able to, like, three hours to four hours during this time to this time, turn off my phone, focus on my study, do that. As soon as the alarm rings, I'm leaving my studies and I'm going out. I'm going to go for my ride. And then I'll have my food and I'll have time for social media. I'll have time for, so I had to put a timetable. And once I was able to do a calendar, the timetable, guess what? I reached my goal. If I can do it, you can do it. That's the message. How to avoid triggers? Just make smart measures. Put smart measures in action and you'll be able to reach your goal. Yeah?
wow you've actually made it you've hit a goal guys you made it to the end that's a goal well done i want to clap my hands but i'm holding this so i can't clap my hands but anyway basically if you made it until now then and you haven't subscribed then i think you need to subscribe yeah yeah subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you'll be able to know when the new videos are up and if there are any topics you'd like me to touch on which are health related please leave a comment below so that i can include it in the series and if you've learned anything different from what i've talked about when it comes to goals and triggers and everything like that then please comment below so that we can all learn together but um, until next time you know what <laughs>